we have underestimated all the ramifications of Thuringia. The situation is not in your control, is it? How could you let it as get to this point? A majority might be wrong. This is a party which is absorbing fascist uh, roots. What do you do? You just keep voting until you get the, the election result that you want? This week, Conflict Zone is at the Munich Security Conference in Germany, a country that has just been plunged into a leadership crisis and confronted with the specter of its Nazi past. Merkel's hand-picked successor, Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer, has stepped down after her CDU members defied orders and voted with the far right in the German state of Thuringia. My guest is a CDU parliamentarian who serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Can his party find its soul and its backbone as Europe and the world looks to Germany to lead? Vadra Kizaveta, welcome. How could an election in Turungia, one of the smallest German states, bring down the hand-selected successor to Angela Merkel, Annegret kramp karrenbauer Are you that weak as a party? Hmm. Well, I don't think so, but we have underestimated all the ramifications of Turingia. Also, that we have to recognize that the Christian Democratic Union has lost the elections in this country some months ago, and we have not taken serious consequences. So this was the first mistake inside the party of Turingia. The second mistake was that we have underestimated the role of the parliament in Thuringia. And third, we have underestimated Ramelow and the AFD. And therefore, I think we should be very decent and very careful for the next weeks. Let's talk a little bit more about the AFD because um, Angela Merkel, German chancellor, has called for a new election. The AFD is feasting on this chaos. They say the following. Uh, they say that a new election is not democratic and the CDU is ignoring a quarter of the electorate. How could you, the governing CDU, get played so badly by the far-right AFD? Well, in Thuringia, uh, there was a very left coalition and not the CDU. The CDU was in the opposition, so we are not a governing party in Thuringia. We have been there a governing party for 25 years. However, in Thuringia, the AFD has shown that they vote recklessly. They vote only uh, for trying to split the cohesion of the center democratic parties. And we have to accept that inside Germany we have a strong protest notion inside the population and we have to take this serious. The AFD is exploiting the sense for opposition or the sense for uh, turmoil inside the population. A lot of people who feel left behind try to make use of the AFD as a protest party. And the politicians of the AFD so, have exploited that. So what do you do now? Because, I mean, you have, for example, the leader of the AFD in the Bundestag, Alice Weidel, saying the following. Um, a state premier was democratically elected from democratically elected representatives. Then the chancellor comes in and says this election has to be undone and voided. So. What do you do? You just keep voting no, no, we, until you get the, the election yeah. result that you want? We have to stay to the, to the uh, reality. The reality was that the AFD has had a candidate who gained zero votes in the parliament. So it was a fake candidate. And no other party was aware about this chess game of the AFD. So they are trying to exploit a democratic procedure by not voting for their own candidate, but voting for a probably mid-center So you're getting people. played? You're getting played? Yeah, the, 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 issue, the issue is we have to be careful, much more careful than in the past. And the AFD is not behaving like a normal competitor. They are behaving like a spoiler. Is this the legacy of Angela Merkel, though? Because, I mean, you, you've seen him, her now 15 years as German chancellor. Um, she's pushed the party so far to the left. She's created this space for the far-right AFD. They're now the largest opposition party in the Bundestag. They are playing kingmaker in Turungia, as you yourself have highlighted. Well, they are not the largest opposition party. They are the largest opposition party, but they have only 90 seats. So we should not overestimate it. Second, as regards the role of, of our party, we are in the center 
and uh, Angela Merkel has detected that normally in Germany you have a left majority. And it is her merit that she has achieved since 2005 a center-oriented policy in Germany with a participation of the CDU. Without this uh, idea, we would have been in the opposition since 10 or 15 years again. So she brought the CDU to the center. And on the other side, you are right, their race was raised uh, a right-wing party. But this was also uh, combined with some migration issues and with the rural areas who sometimes feel left behind. 54% of Germans believe that the scandal in Turungia damaged their trust in democracy. It has, it has shaken this country to its core. The reaction has been fast and furious. Weren't you aware of the damage that this could cause. I mean, you had 17 members of the Turungia uh, government, CDU members who were elected, who called for you for help. They mm -hmm. called for you months ago. Mm -hmm. They called for you in October. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't want to blame the Turingian CDU, but they have made also some serious mistakes. First of all, the leader of the party has lost the election, but he stood in office. So this was wrong. He didn't open his seat for others. Second, in preparation of the election of Ramelow, he was, or this from election the from the left, yeah, he was not aware about the chess game. So they all have been black eyed at that time. So my guess is that, first of all, the Thuringian uh, CDU has to take over the responsibility. Second, the CDU in Germany has to be aware that the population in Eastern Germany is not willing to accept. Um, influence from the, from the outside, but if we influence from the outside, I'm a defender of Angela Merkel, then we should explain why. We cannot accept that a party which is defending 12 years of dictatorship as some uh, excrements of a bird, that such a party is trying to be part of a process of for, to, to rule a country. So let us talk about this strategy with how you deal with that party right now um, and the merits of that strategy. Your party in Hamburg in 2018, you, you came up with the following um, uh, directive, that the CDU rejects coalitions and similar forms of cooperation, both with the left party and the right AFD. How do you plan on maintaining that? Yes. Well, when we look mm -hmm. at Turingia, for example, 54% um, of the voters in this German state voted for fringe parties that you won't cooperate with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, that's uh, also a majority might be wrong, but it's democracy. It's democracy. It's democracy. You are right, but the AFD. What do you has tell not... those voters? Their votes don't matter. Mm -hmm. No, but we have to explain what the AFD has in in behind, what it's thinking from behind, what's where it's leading, who is leading from behind, and that this is a party which is absorbing fascist uh, roots and is absorbing fascist fascist. Uh, powers inside Germany. So we have a neglectable NPD, we have a, ne a neglectable DVU, former right-wing parties who all went over to the AFD. Okay, well I want to talk with you about how you maintain your majority nationally because that's also falling in the polls. Um, currently the CDU um, polling at just 27 percent nationally. You have very conservative members in your party, for mm -hmm. example, the Werte Union. You have called for its dissolution. Yeah. Wouldn't you just be hand-delivering more votes to the AFD? I don't think so. I think if the CDU... Where would, would they go? You're hoping that they form their, another new party, another party on know. the far right? The voters of the AFD have several sources. A quarter of them are from the CDU. Uh, nearly the half are those who have, have abstained uh, to votes for years, for decades nearly. And the other third is from uh, social democrats and other parties, from the left party even in the east, in the eastern country. So it's not a, a sister or a children of the CDU. It's the children of leaving the countryside at home, uh, aside, behind. It's a sign for neglecting the needs of the people in the in the five new lender in Germany of Germany. And third. We should be very well aware that uh, the AFD is a party with fascist roots, but we should not blame the voters. We should name and shame the defenders of this wrong policy, like Höcke.
And we cannot cooperate with uh, heads of a party who are very, very right-wing. But for the CDU in, in, in the, our republic, we should stay to the center. If we turn to the right, if we shift so, to the right, we will lose in the center and we will lose more than we might gain at the right wing. A very famous quote I'd like to bring in now from Franz Josef Strauss, legendary prime minister of Bavaria and former candidate for chancellor. No legitimate political party can be to the right of the CSU, your sister party, the CDU, mm -hmm. you work mm -hmm. together. Um, you can't adhere to that mantra anymore? No, it, it can't work because now the right scene is also occupied by fascists and we cannot be more right-wing than the fascists are. We have to really separate us from uh, such thinking. So Second, Strauss never became chancellor and we should not repeat the mistakes if we if we offer right-wing candidates for chancellorship to conservative people, we won't win. We will create opposition leaders, but we will not create chancellors. We will create chancellors if we are in the center. Here's what the Germans think is going to happen in your country. 48% believe that the AFD will be part of a regional or a federal government in the next 10 years. 26% think it is okay that the AFD participates in a regional government. 19% mm -hmm support the AFD as part of a federal government. The yeah. situation is not in your control. No. Is it? How could you let it as get far to as this point? You are very experienced. As far as you know, we have since the beginning of the uh, Federal Republic of Germany, we have a right wing up to a right, a right wing uh, oriented population up to 25%. This has not changed since the 50s. And now the people utter themselves even more frankly than in the past. So we have to be very aware that we have about 20 to 30 percent who are able and willing to vote very right-wing parties and about 10 to 15 percent who are really fascist. So we have to invest more in education and in explanation. And second, for me it's of utmost importance not to accept that such parties create governments. We should be here very clear. Annegret kramp karrenbauer is now stepping down um, as head of the party. She will not run for chancellor. Um, she was uh, the successor who was picked um, by both your party and by Angela Merkel herself. Was she a bad pick? I don't think so. But she has made some bad choices in, she has in just the last months. 21% of people in the country who are, ha who are happy with her performance. That's just 6% better than the AFD head Alexander Gauland. Yeah, it's, the, uh, it's also a question of how you, you raise the question and how you formulate the questions. Um, and on the other side, um, she has achieved something which nearly is uh, forgotten. She has reconciliated CSU and CDU. This is her really her, her biggest merit uh, as regards as the party chief. Now she's out, there's a power vacuum. Here at the Munich Security Conference, we know that the world is increasingly turning to Germany, calling on Germany for leadership. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to talk a little bit more about Germany's track record on, on an international stage, and we can begin with Syria. On October 21st, 2019, um, Defense Minister Annegret kramp karrenbauer made a proposal for a security zone in Syria, similar to a proposal that you had made uh, years earlier. She brought the proposal to NATO a few, a few days later. How did that go? Well, the proposal itself is very valuable, very estimated, but at that time... Very impractical. Yeah, very practical because it shows to the United States that the, that the Europeans are willing for burden sharing. And this was the, the core idea, European burden sharing, combined with the United Nations security mandate. However, the proposal came either too late or too early, so you need to dovetail it with other initiatives and you have to also coordinate this with uh, other parties and to coordinate it inside the government. Your own foreign minister said, we are being told from all sides this plan is not realistic. The people in Syria don't have time for theoretical debates. So, I mean, what, what's better for you? Um, is it better to have a good plan that's not enacted or a plan that actually helps people? Mm -hmm. Well, the plan which helps people is still missing and it's due to the fact that the European Union has not a qual uh, qualitative majority vote but you need to act unanimously. So this is the, the real um, barrier of European ability to act and unfortunately 
this is not uh, over has not yet been overcome but Angelgrid Karrenbau has also made here in in Munich has made a lot of proposals how to overcome this and Borel uh, the successor of Mrs Mogherini made it very clear these days that the European uh, ability to act is only lip service and we need to overcome that the situation is dire the situation is currently at our doorstep we have your own interior minister saying that we are going to have a second 2015 if we do not help countries at the eu borders with how to deal with migration three million civilians in idlib amid a government mm -hmm. offensive Six hundred thousand have already been displaced since december mm -hmm. what are you doing well, this is the idea of Annegret kamp karrenbauer about the safety zone. We need a UN mandate and then to prepare Ideas a zone. Ideas and action are two different things. Yeah, but this is a necessar a necessary, uh, really a necessary step because if you don't get United Nations into action, you will lose the international credibility of the United Nations itself. And it's a question of diplomatic endeavor to bring in uh, n not a Chinese or an, a, a Russian vote against it. So you need to convince them and you need to offer them something. That's a question of negotiation. And we should do this. We should try to achieve a, a, a secure and safe haven either in North Syria or in, in, a, in a western or a part of Iraq to have a safe haven for refugees under a United Nations control com combined with, with other partners. Because but the Turks and the Russians just completely bypassed you and they, they did it on their own. Yeah, uh, why, why did they do that? Because the European Union was not able to act. There was no willingness. And therefore we need these German proposals because it was Germany which hampered, for example, a European action in the Straits of Hormuz some, let's, some let's months ago. Let's talk a little bit more about your partnerships. Um, you mentioned the United Nations, the European Union. I want to talk about NATO. Um, Germany made the following commitment in 2014. NATO leaders, they, they mm -hmm. all recommitted to increasing defense spending and spending 2% of GDP by 2024. Do you mm -hmm. know what the, the number is? Yeah, I know in, very in well. In the current government report, mm -hmm. um, 1. released this well, yeah. 1.5% mm -hmm. by 2024. Currently we are with How one do you or two. face your partners? Yeah, yeah. Well, our caucus, Christian Democratic and Christian Social Union, we demanded to achieve this by the end of this period. So that means in 2021. But our coalition partner, the SPD, didn't want that at all. So we need to find compromises. And what the compromise was to achieve that goal by 2025. However, the pure numbers won't help. This would be about 60 billion euros. Some five years ago, we had nearly 32 billion euros. So that would mean to nearly double it by 2025. And 2% would mean 80 billion euros. Who takes you seriously, though, if you can't even abide to your commitments on the international scale because you have those internal dynamics mm -hmm. regarding your co current coalition yeah. and your parties within the country. Mm -hmm. Who takes you seriously? We need to calm down because we are very honest. And our uh, defense minister, as well as the chancellor, made the commitment 1.5% by 2025 due to our coalition commitments and to, to continue and to achieve the 2% goal by 2031. I know, as a simple member of parliament, that this is too long, too late, but we have also an armed forces which was not able to absorb any further money because all the changes with which are needed, all the reforms are not yet due. The reforms are overdue, but they are not yet in action, not yet uh, practicable. So that, needs, uh, that means we need further time. Second, it's not only the figure. What we need is more interoperability and more standardization. And then we could also save money. We have 32 armies in the European Union and we need to reform that all these 32 armies have at least the same procedures and nearly the same equipment. Let's talk a little bit more about, about the readiness of your army to mm -hmm. respond um, uh, to that common defense clause within NATO. Um, we have from the Bundeswehr's Omnibusman, mm -hmm. he says the following, there's not enough equipment, not enough personnel, too much bureaucracy. You have a fleet of submarines stuck in port because they didn't have required propellers. You have tank battalions operating at one fourth of capacity, Luftwaffe pilots not being able to log enough flight hours to compete. Yeah. Can can your allies rely on you to be ready? Well, what, uh, as regards our commitment to the uh, Balkans or to Afghanistan or to Africa or the Baltic air policing, we fully achieve all benchmarks. 
But what is uh, up to reforms is still uh, the domestic situation of our armed forces. And this is really horrible. And uh, the Ombudsman, you just mentioned it, is repeating this since five years. However, look where we come from. We are a pacifist country. We have had 20 years from 1990. You're a pacifist country, however, with, with aspirations to lead on the international scale, scale when it comes to involvement in conflicts where military deterrence and military action might be needed. The others so press don't, us. So don't you need a functional yeah. Bundeswehr, yeah. or do you just plan to sit we, on we the need. sidelines until you eventually As get things in order? As a former officer, I know a functioning army since the early 1990s, and I know a dysfunctional army the last 25 years. And we have achieved a lot now, and the, the armed forces, the Bundeswehr is on a very good way. However, it will take another 10 years because it was nearly dismantled as regards our combat forces. It was nearly dismantled as regards our stocks of ammunition since 2011, the war against Libya. We have not refilled our ammunition stocks. So look where we come from. Our narrative was we are encircled by partners and friends so we could focus on security, on social security. We offer 8% of the world uh, of the of the world spending for social welfare. It's Germany. 8%. We have 1% of the population of the world and we offer 8% of the world's social spending. But we do not match our commitments since 2014. But we know to achieve that because since 1990 we have fulfilled that. So we need to turn back to our former commitments and endeavors we had. We know how it works, but we didn't do that. Let's talk about another security concern, Nord, Nord Stream 2. Um, it's been heavily criticized by the United States and the European Union um, for facilitating German dependence on, on, on Russian gas. You said the following about it. I'm skeptical of Nord Stream 2, but it is still Russian gas that Europe needs. Germany has more than two thirds of its gas supplies from Russia, which cannot be discussed away. So you want to have your cake and eat it. Mm -hmm. First of all, the Americans should calm down because they import billions of barrels, no, but millions of barrels of Russian oil and they should calm down and look on should their the own Should the Europeans also side. calm down? There's an open letter from 60 member of parliaments from five political groups who wrote the following to Angela Merkel, choose the European way and not the Germany way first. Your government is allowing a major rift between EU member countries. Two remarks on that. I was not defending Nord Stream 2 since 2012 until last year. But due to the dramatic development in the German energy change, we need really Nord Stream 2 because otherwise we could not uh, achieve our own energy So you're prepared supply. to sell your energy security to Russia? Our energy security is really the mistake was done uh, 15 years ago when Chancellor Schröder went into Russian services and therefore we have made these mistakes. And I, I'm very bluntly in this way. We. Uh, politicians, and I, I would, would be very careful because we all are guilty in that, we have named this as an economic project. It isn't an economic project. It was uh, the advantage of Schröder to name this as an economic project. It's a purely political one. And now we cannot withdraw from it. But we have also taken it because we can try to influence Russia. But I am not, I'm not a defender of Nord Stream 2 uh, for economic reasons. I think we really needed to achieve our energy change and we need an influence to Russia. But it is not a good choice. Let's talk about digital independence. There are some security uh, concerns there as well. U U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo um, saying here at the Munich Security Conference that Huawei is the Trojan horse of Chinese intelligence. And yet you're not banning it from the bidding process of building your 5G network here mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, we have some role models like the United Kingdom, for example, or France. They all seem to be in a certain fear of losing cooperation chances with China. But I don't want to be ironic. Look, um, some of the, I only know the German word, antenne, the an antennen, the sensors of uh, 5G are uh, made from Rheinmetall and they are created in China. 100% of the Huawei antenna are made from a German That's very interesting enterprise. technicals, but how, yeah. you know, how about yeah. the accusations here? Mm -hmm. Now, we in the parliament have achieved a change 
in the governmental papers on that and we have achieved that our government has to reconsider some of its position and this was achieved last week. So also a strong position of Deutsche our Deutsche Telekom, the, the leading telecom provider in your country, they are already in talks with Huawei to provide 70% of radio transmission gear for 5G. I mean, those talks are already happening. And, and you're, you're talking in the parliament when Deutsche Telekom is negotiating deals with Huawei already. Well, one of the main, of the bigger sponsors of the Munich Security Conference is Huawei. On the German Party Convention of the CDU was one of the, the biggest uh, attractive uh, platforms was from Huawei. So they are in a charming offensive. Nevertheless, we have to be very careful due to uh, the question of digitalization and uh, cybersecurity. We should not be black-eyed in this context. We've highlighted a number of challenges. Um, who will be the next German Chancellor? Who will have to deal with those challenges? Laschet, Merz or Schwan? Your answer, one word. A German citizen. That was three words. The opportunity to lead. Lead. It will be somebody from the CDU, I think. Right. It will not be somebody from the CSU. Thank you. Thank you.